this looks like. All right, so I need two good... Shall we have the two sparkly ones? In the... Okay, you've got to hold that end and go that way. And keep going 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 and keep going. Hold on a moment. Right. Would you like to just stand along this? Wherever you see one of these red ones, would you like to stand? So go and see if you can find another red one along there. Yep, and you go and see if you can find another red one. And you go and see if you can find another red one. And what about Fred? You go and see if you can find another red one to stand next to. Yeah, and you. Harry, do you want to be with my bit here? Do you want to hold the tape? Okay, keep going, keep going. You might need to go that way. You might need to go that way. Clara, keep going that way. This is so big. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Oh, 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 oh. Stop, 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 stop. Right. Here we go. Right. That is about the same size as the ichthyosaur. So if you imagine Harry's its head and Clara and the others are the tail... That is pretty big, isn't it? That is, now, bigger than a that is bigger than a dinosaur. And do you know the biggest ichthyosaur ever found? This was the biggest one in the UK. The biggest one ever found was 25 feet, which would be to the back door. That would be really amazing. Would you like to let go of the um, tape? Because this is Nigel's tape, and he might not be too chuffed if it... Would you like to let go of the tape? Leave it on the ground. Right. Now, Harry, this is your big responsibility. You've got to wind. <laughs> right. Would you like to go and sit down for a moment? So, imagine if you were a fisherman and you got something that big in your nets. It would break the nets, wouldn't it? It would break the boat you wouldn't be able to haul it into the boat. So the reason I told you about the ichthyosaur was that we are going to be talking about fish today and fishing and a story about fishing. But even though Jesus did an amazing thing in this story and there were lots of fish, none of them was as big as that big fish. You could be there a long time, Harry. So, um, would you like to come and do our song, Bethany, and the band, and I'll help Harry. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for doing that for me. Should we just do the last bit? Is it going to go? Keep going. Yeah. Thank you. Would you like to stand? Now, I expect all the adults to follow Bethany doing the actions. <laughs> this is a new song. Um, so we're going to sing the first verse and chorus once through and then repeat. And just follow along if you can. And if you can't sing or don't know the words, then just follow Bethany's actions. <laughs> oh. There was between us By the cross you came and broke them down You broke them down There were chains around us By your grace we are no longer bound No longer bound You called me out of the grave You called me into the light You called my name and then my heart came alive Your love is greater Your love is stronger your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. 
first one again. There was between us, by the cross you came and broke them down. You broke them down. There were chains around us, by your grace we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You called me out of the grave, you called me into the light. You called my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Feel the darkness shaking, all the dead are coming back to life. I'm back to life. Hear the song awaken. All creation singing, we're alive, cause you're alive. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. What a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We shouted out, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found. Death can't hold us down. Shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive, and what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive, and what a love we found, death can hold us down. Shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. He's life. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Sit down for a moment, because I've just realised that I was so eager to tell you about the big fish that I forgot birthdays. And that could have been really awful. So, who thinks that they've had a birth? <laughs> Who's had a birthday last week or this coming week? And I've heard a few. Is this Ben or is it you? Prayer, Ben. <laughs> well done, Ben. <laughs> Would somebody, Bethany, can you take them around? Because I haven't got my mask on. Yeah. Saskia. Joe, I heard you had one as well. Okay. And I think it is Simon's today. So happy birthday to Simon especially. Anyone else? I must say, anybody who's had a birthday in January and hasn't managed to get a pencil, or has had a birthday this year and hasn't managed to get a pencil, can have one today. <laughs> Me! Happy birthday! Bit of self-interest there. Go on, Joe. That means you can have one as well. <laughs> okay. So, those are our celebrations. And now we're, the, the children are going to leave us, the children and the young people groups. So, we just better let's pray for them. Lord, we just want to thank you for the joy of our children and our young people. 
And we want to pray for all who are teaching them this morning that indeed your love would wake them up in you. Lord, that they would be just coming alive in your spirit this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, for time to go. Isn't that lovely to see? Right, I would like you to think I would like you to think of a time when you've had to really, 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 really trust God. Can you hear me? So I'm coming down amongst you, and would you like to just think of a time when you've had to really trust God? And if you don't mind sharing that on the microphone, that would be really good. So, is there a time when you have really had to trust God that you don't mind sharing? I think that's on, Sharon. Well, it's a bit of a long story, actually, so I'll cut it really short, but... Um... As you know, I lived and worked in Moldova for a long time, and at the beginning, I didn't have a visa. My time for getting a visa had run out, and uh, I had to go on a trip. I actually went to the Holy Land, and uh, when I was booked to come back to Moldova, they said in, uh, at the airport, uh, you can only go as far as Bucharest because you haven't got a visa to enter the country. And I'm like, that's not acceptable. So I went to Bucharest and I prayed and my flight was booked through to Moldova but I wasn't supposed to be on it. And um, I prayed and I contacted one person in Moldova and said, can you send a fax to say that I can enter the country? Which they did and uh, I was able to board my flight but it was really touch and go and I could have been stranded in Bucharest for a long time. But uh, God came through and I got there. Thank you. Okay, anybody else got a time when you really had to trust God? Um, so in the summer, when I was organising the Together Again Festival, um, there were lots of things that were not aligned for the festival to work, um, like COVID regulations that only changed a couple of weeks beforehand, and speakers that were in the wrong country, um, and I just had to sit firm and trust that God would work it all out for me because I wasn't either a government official or a ferry operator. Mm -hmm. And wasn't it wonderful, the outcome of that? Yeah, wasn't that wonderful? Did I see a hand over here? Yeah. When I was pregnant with Nathaniel, uh, it was a very risky pregnancy, and I was told that the chances of him being stillborn were really high. Um, so we had a lot of prayers through the pregnancy, and I just had to trust that... God, whatever happened would be the right result. And uh, he was absolutely... And we've seen him this morning. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Anybody else? As I'm down this way. There's a Mandy. I wasn't sure whether to share this, but a lot of you will know that Nigel had a really, really serious stroke back in 2009. And I had to trust God a lot. Mm. Thank you. So I've actually struggled to um, to share this because listening to everyone, we we end up talking about the outcome that's positive, and I want to talk about experience where I trusted God and His will came about, but it wasn't exactly what I hoped. Um, yeah. Yes, I, my dad uh, fell sick um, in August. Uh, just. Overnight, I heard information that he was in the hospital back in Nigeria. And uh, we prayed all through the night. And he wasn't sick, really, but he just went to the village. And they said he was talking to someone and started coughing. Turns out he had a heart attack. But because he was in a remote location, he couldn't get to a good hospital on time. And by the time he got to the hospital, they had said, oh, his heart had given up and all of that. 
And we, I prayed my best prayer on earth, and yeah, it didn't happen. So, but God is still good. God is still good. God is still good, and that's our one of the things that's going to come out today. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Yeah. Okay, I think that's a cue for a song probably in a minute. So would you like to stand and we'll sing together? Until I lay my head 
Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Let's sing verse one again. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God all my life. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Cause all my so so good with every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God oh I will sing of the goodness of God cause your goodness is running after it's running after me this is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Ooh. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Of the goodness of God. Let's sing that again. Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. So we stand in the goodness of God this morning. We have a good good God.
you might like to sit for prayer. Still sitting in that goodness. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. And we're coming to that good God as people who feel our frailty and feel our weakness. And so we're going to come and say sorry, and there will be a response on the screen that you might like to look at uh, and to say with me. So, Father of all goodness, thank you for the way you have led each one of us, for the way you have held us in the hardest times, for the way you have blessed us. And today we want to come to you with honesty and with truth, knowing our weaknesses but also knowing that you are a good, good God. So, Father, we need to ask your forgiveness. Sometimes you have given us so much, and we haven't recognized that it has come from you. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Father, sometimes you have been calling us to new things and we have refused to listen. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Father, sometimes you have opened up a path for us and walked ahead of us. And yet we have been too busy or too scared to follow. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Father, in your goodness, would you forgive us? Would you restore us? And would you give us a fresh start with you? Cut us free from fear and lack of faith and everything that holds us back and fill us with your spirit once again. Dear Father, we want to be the people you created us to be. Would you like to say that with me? It's on the screen. Father, we want to be the people you created us to be. One more time. Father, we want to be the people you created us to be. Amen. And we're going to continue in prayer as Becca comes to lead us. Let's begin by praying for what's been happening in the news this week. Father God, we give you thanks that the COVID raids are starting to go down and that the Omicron variant appears to be less fatal than previous variants. We pray that these rates will continue to decrease as quickly as possible. with the statistic that one in six people suffered with mental health issues in the summer of 2021, we pray for this mental health epidemic as well. With limited resources in the NHS, we pray that people will be able to find help and that the church 
will also be a place of safety and comfort, a community which relieves loneliness and a place where we can share God's peace with those in need. And we pray for the safety of all those affected by the explosion of the undersea volcano on Tonga, causing a tsunami yesterday. Lord, we pray earnestly that all will have heard the warnings and will have got to safety in time and that the destruction will be limited. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our country, for Boris Johnson and the current question marks over the leadership of the UK. Lord, I don't know quite what to pray, but I pray that your will will be done in this situation. And we pray for our Queen in this her Platinum Jubilee year. We give thanks for her many years of faithful duty to our country and pray that our country will join together and enjoy celebrating this enormous milestone, drawing local communities together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church leaders and for Tom preaching away today. We pray for Sophie too, and for the team at the church plant in Deep Cut. Thank you so much, Lord, for the growth and the exciting things that are happening there and here as we see your kingdom grow. We pray for our church community here at St. Paul's. And we pray particularly for the current training opportunities, both for prayer ministry and for evangelism and outreach. Lord, we pray that as a church we will be bold, that each and every one of us will feel called to step out in faith and sign up for one or both of these training days, that the, despite the discomfort or the inconvenience, we commit to growing in Christ. And we pray for the Glow Club event this Thursday evening. We give thanks for the many who've already signed up. And we pray that all those who attend will meet Jesus on the night and draw closer to him, especially those who don't know him yet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us finish by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Becca. Rosemary, are you okay to come and do the reading? Yeah, good. And then Sophie will speak to us. The reading comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. And it can be found on page 1032 in the Church Bibles. Jesus calls his first disciples. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats 
the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then Jesus sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon asked, answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the cat of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Yesterday I was cutting an onion. I assume most people here will understand that. Um, and I was putting off that hairy bit, the root bit, and I got a splinter from an onion. I still have a very sore thumb, actually. Has anyone else ever had <laughs> a splinter? I can't believe I'm asking this in public. From an onion? No. And I was thinking about it when I walked up to church this morning, and I thought, we have to expect the unexpected. <laughs> That is a link that I genuinely made with my onion. And this morning, I wonder how you've come into church. Do you expect God to speak to you this morning? I hope you do. And if you don't, we're going to pray just because sometimes by naming it, we can address it. Let's pray. Lord God, it says in Scripture that your word is alive, is living and active. And I pray this morning that it would be alive in our hearts. That it would be made known in our lives and how we live out your gospel truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I bet you wondered where that was going, didn't you? <laughs> um, a bit of show and tell as well to start. It's a good one today. Sorry. I, I am enjoying it already. Uh, David, if we could have the picture. This, this is something you might not know about me. I am an avid fisherwoman. <laughs> but only um, if I'm in New Zealand on my brother-in-law's boat and he does most of the hard work. <laughs> but look, look how good I am. It's good, right? I, I hope you're wondering where this one's going to go as well, really. But at least it links to the sermon a bit more than an onion. So it always blows my mind how incredible it is to catch a fish. Like, I really, I, I'm not a fisherman. I don't like fishing, particularly unless I'm in the sunshine. Um, and it is made a lot easier by a brother-in-law who's very, very, very pro. And today, our gospel story really sort of resonates with me as to my way of fishing. Jesus does all the hard work, <laughs> and then you get a great catch of fish. I love it. Um, but I also love this story... Um, for another reason, and I'm about to tell a story that is, it blows, I told it this morning till nine o'clock and it blew my mind and I'm going to tell it again and I really pray that it blows your mind at how real this scripture that we've read is, uh, even in everyday life. And um, some of you will know that I lived and worked in India for a few years uh, and the couple that I worked with run a charity 
And this is the back story so that the actual story makes sense. Please bear with me today. <laughs> they run a charity in Goa and they work with women and children in distress. So they work with women who are caught up in the sex trade uh, and they work to equip them with other tools to free them from the sex trade so that they can go and make a, a living and support their family and flourish again and break uh, that chain that they've been caught in. And they also work with children who are orphaned um, and some of them are orphaned by um, women and men in the sex trade uh, because they get HIV and then they die from HIV-related illnesses. So these children are left with nobody. Uh, and so they work with those kids to provide an education, uh, to provide food, uh, and to provide an incredible family. Um, and if I'm going to plug my book. If anyone wants to know any more stories, uh, I wrote a book with the lady who runs it, and it's actually a recipe book. Some of you, most of you probably already have it. Uh, but if you like curry and you want to read more stories like the one I'm about to tell, then please do um, ask me and I'll get you a book. Um, that wasn't planned. <laughs> it's that kind of Sunday. Um, I've gone off. No, I haven't? No, I'm back. Um, and so this is the charity that they run. And the year that I was there, it was New Year's Day. I remember it so clearly. Uh, and we had a big, long conversation because if any of you have worked for a charity or know what charities do, they don't make money, okay? which is a bit of a struggle a lot of the time for charities um, because you are, you are relying on other people's giving. And their giving was fine. They, they had um, what they thought was enough, except that the food prices in the area went up so high that they couldn't then provide for the next month's food for the children. Uh, and so this was a huge panic, and we were trying to figure out and pray and just sort of discuss what can we do, how can we ask for more. Uh, and and uh, it got to the evening, they said, we're going to go and walk on the beach because we live in Goa, <laughs> and that's what you do when you live in Goa. Go and walk on the beach, and we're going to pray, and we're going to cry out to God because he put this dream in our hearts to help women and children who are in distress. Look after the woman and the orphan in their distress. It says it in Scripture, and that is, the, that is what was on their heart. And they couldn't believe that God wouldn't provide for them, but they were struggling to believe that God would provide for them. So they went to walk on the beach, and while they were walking and praying, I came across some fish, just a few fish on the beach. Um, and, and they were like, oh, amazing. What a brilliant sign that God is going to provide for us. So they went to pick up the fish from the beach floor. And they felt God say to them, no, don't pick up those fish. And just for a moment, imagine how they're feeling when they might not be able to feed the kids. And they actually also provide food for the women as well so that they can get back on their feet. And God says, no, not those fish. I have given you this dream in your heart and I will provide. And so I think begrudgingly in that moment and probably with tears in their eyes, they kept walking and they left the fish behind. And as they walked and walked, they came across more fish, and it started to sort of open out, and they realized they were standing in an incredible overflow of fish that the fishermen had left on the beach because they didn't need them. It was an abundance, and they had left them there. And they came home that evening with five bags of fish to feed these kids, to feed the women, and it blew my mind, and it still blows my mind when I tell it that this story of an abundant catch happened to them in their reality to provide for something that they desperately needed. And it raised their faith, and it reinvigorated their dream. And then, don't worry, the kids still ate, and they still run what, that charity today. But it was just such an incredible story of God's provision and his kingdom at work. And I wonder, as we sit here today, how are your expectations of what God can do in your life when you follow him? Have you become so bogged down in the mundane, everyday work, everyday activity, that you've forgotten to raise your eyes heavenward and ask God what he can do in your life? It's only in Luke's gospel that the call of the disciples is preceded by this incredible story of a catch of fish. And it's very easy to probably get caught on how many fish there are uh, and this magnificent catch and it's so great. And you could start there and you could stop there and it would be fantastic and it would be amazing. But it is a backstory to the, to the call 
of Simon Peter. It is the backstory, much like I had to tell you the backstory of the charity for that collection of fish to make sense, because they could have just had a really great shopping trip. But that's not the story. So we need the backstory to understand the call of Peter. Uh, sorry, of Simon Peter. This is not the first time that Simon has encountered Jesus. And I think that is really significant. It would seem a little strange that, that Simon would give his boat to Jesus, having just worked all night with an unsuccessful catch. I don't know if you've ever had an unsuccessful day at work, but probably the last thing you want to do is go back to work when that's happened. You want to go home, you want to eat your dinner, and you want to let it go. And Jesus is standing in his boat saying, we need to go out again. But he meets Jesus, and if you flick back to Luke 4, you'll see he actually heals Simon's mother-in-law. So he has seen Jesus do a miracle, but yet it appears that he's not yet quite following him, although he is around Jesus. He hasn't quite made that step, and as we see in the latter part of our story, he hasn't quite made that step. But when you know that his, Jesus has healed his mother-in-law, you kind of understand a little bit more of why he lets him take his boat out to use as a floating platform to talk to the crowds. And I think there are three things that are poignant from this story that are for us here at St. Paul's to take away. The first is that Simon was washing his nets when he noticed Jesus was in his boat. Now, again, I don't know if you've ever washed a fishing net. I'm going to guess not. There's not much fishing in Camberley. Um, let alone with a net. Um, but he was likely looking down. It's really intricate. Again, because I lived in Goa and the fishermen are often on the beach in the, in the afternoon, in the midday sun, working through their net to, to fix it, to, to um, tie together all the bits of net that have broken under the weight of the fish. Well, he was washing his nets. So I don't know, because he didn't have a successful night. He probably wasn't fixing much of his net. But he was looking down. We need to look up. He needed to look up to see that Jesus was in the boat. He needed to look up to start this story on a roll. It's an arduous task. How often have we found ourselves looking down when really we need to look up? We need to lift our eyes. This story doesn't unfold. It does not unfold if he doesn't look up. What is happening in your life as an unstarted story because you won't look up and see Jesus asking something of you? And Jesus then tells Simon to put out a little from the shore. Now, that's not a big deal. That's just, okay, let's get the boat a little bit out. That's just a bit of a shove, I imagine. I don't really know. Um, a bit of a shove. And they're floating in the shallows. For Simon in that moment, that is probably all he could muster. But now he's in the boat, and he's with Jesus. And they're floating on the water. And Jesus is speaking to the crowds. And we don't know what Jesus was saying, but I imagine something was resonating in Simon's heart. And at this point, I am imagining, and you can kind of tell from what Peter says in the next part, that he's a little bit, starting to get a bit tense at the requests of Jesus here. He's doing it, but I'm not sure. Doesn't tell us. Oh, Siri's just gone off. Sorry, everybody. I'm not sure that it is really what he wants to be doing. I don't understand. <laughs> it was, was going to happen, wasn't it? I can't even turn it off. Sorry. Anyone else feel like that? <laughs> So you can feel that tension rising. He's put his boat out. He's fed up. He's had an unsuccessful catch. Jesus has asked him to do it, and he's done it. Put out a little from the shore. And for some of us, we feel a bit like that. That's all that we can muster. The small step of yes to Jesus. Then Jesus asks him, Put out into deep water and lower your net. Oh, 
Can you feel it in the passage when he responds? Can you feel a slight hint of sarcasm or a slight hint of you, Jesus, are being a know-it-all and being or a bit ignorant? I don't know. Is that okay to say? I'm not sure. But in the King James Version, it says, launch out into deep water. I love that. Launch out into deep water. So Simon has already said, yeah, okay. He's looked up. He's seen Jesus. He said, yeah, okay, I'll put my boat on the water with you. Fine, you can speak to the people. And now Jesus is saying, I know that you fished all night, and you're a professional, and you do this every night of your life. But put it out in deep water and lower your nets again. How do you think he would have felt in that moment? Have any of you ever had God say something to you? Had Jesus speak to you and say, put out into deep water. Do this thing that is way beyond your comfort zone, that is way beyond what you think possible, and follow me. And go on, nah, actually, I'm a professional here. I'm the expert. I was trying to think of a situation where I felt like an expert and someone undermined me. And honestly, I'm not going to tell any stories because I think it makes me look like an awful person. The reaction that I have to feeling like I'm being undermined. And I'm sure many of you can understand that. And it can be something really simple. Like because I lived in India for like not very long, I feel like I'm really good at cooking curry. And if, if my husband ever tries to get involved in the cooking of the curry... I suddenly become the world's biggest expert on curry. I ate a lot of curry, can I just say? I didn't, eat, I didn't cook a lot of curry. I just really enjoy eating it. But suddenly I'm an expert, and if he tries to even turn the gas... Does anyone else do this when you're cooking? Somebody else comes in and... They haven't been in the room, they don't know where you're at in the cooking, but they'll, they'll just fiddle with the gas. Oh, there's a lot of mumbling going on in here. If you're at home online, I bet you're also having a mumble. Everybody gets that. Ah, oh, suddenly, it's a horrible feeling, and... This is worse. Jesus is a carpenter. He's a carpenter come rabbi that they're starting to listen to. But suddenly he's telling them how to fish. I cannot imagine how Simon feels in this moment, really. A bit of a kick in the teeth, don't you think? But even though he's probably feeling a bit hacked off in this moment, he says, because you say so, we'll do it. Part of me, and this is the part that probably (laughs) is not very holy, thinks, I bet he was just trying to show up Jesus. Don't you think? I think he was probably like, wow, I've seen you do a miracle, but this is my domain, actually. But fine, I'll show you. Let me prove to you that it won't work. He's tired, right? You don't respond very um, graciously when you're tired, but he seems to go anyway. This is a series of yes moments for Simon. He has seen Jesus work a miracle. He has looked up from his nets. He has put the boat out a little bit. And now Jesus is asking something greater of him. And he has said yes. You see, I think the tiny message in there is that it doesn't matter sometimes how we say yes. But you've got to say yes. Because look what happens. So under this guidance of a carpenter, he does it. And when the miraculous catch of fish happens, he falls at Jesus' knees. I don't know if you've ever seen someone, probably in a movie, uh, fall at someone's knees. He's clinging on to Jesus at this moment, I can imagine. Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. In the presence of Jesus and in Jesus' power and the response of Jesus to Simon's yes, he falls to his knees, he repents and he follows Jesus. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Not only has this man, this rabbi, this carpenter, told him, I can do your job better than you. (laughs) He's now saying, leave everything, leave your profession and follow me. It's huge. 
For some of us today, we need to look up. That is all that Jesus is asking of you today, to look up from the mundane, from the daily grind, and to respond to him. For others, he's asking us to put the boat out a little from the shore, to increase your trust just a little bit. And for others of us, he's asking us to launch out into the deep. Perhaps you have a dream that is unfulfilled, that God has placed in your heart. And the response to that is to launch out into the deep, but you haven't had the courage or the trust, perhaps, to do it just yet. I believe that God is saying to some of us, launch out into the deep. And I don't know what that is for you, but God does. And I know for a fact that he's speaking to you now, and that is ringing in your heart, and your palms are getting sweaty, and you can feel yourself come alive a bit at the thought of that dream, because that is who you've been called to be. And I believe that for every single person in this room, God wants us to follow him, to join in with his mission, and fish for men. To see people come to faith, and our country and our world come alive for Jesus. And it starts here with you at St Paul's in Camberley. This mission is not somebody else's, it's ours. Let's pray. Lord, if we are to see our lives changed, our response must be like Simon Peter's, to say yes to you. Help us to look up, to not be distracted by the daily grind, the mundane, the tasks which can so easily overshadow what you're doing. Help us to put out from shore just a little bit, to trust you just a little bit more than we ever have before. And Lord, for those of us who need to take a big leap of faith, would you help us to launch out into the deep by the power of your spirit? Because none of this happens without your Holy Spirit at work. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. I sort of had an inkling of what Sophie was going to say. So we built a little bit of space into the service at this point because we thought that you might like to just reflect on what God is saying to you. So we're going to sing Oceans. Um, so we will be standing up in a minute. But you might like to think if you want to spend time with God in the next few minutes, you might like to go and find yourself a space somewhere in the church and just ask God which of those three points that Sophie mentioned apply to you? Is it about looking up? Is it about pushing out the boat just a little way more than you have up to now? Or is it about launching into the deep? A big thing that God has been talking to you about and that you've been ignoring. And can I say that when I was preparing for this service, God said something to me about something that I'd been putting off because of COVID. And that might be you as well. Now is the time to get the vision back for that. So let's stand. If you want to move out, find a space at the front, along the side aisles, anywhere. 
this is just going to be a time when we sing or listen and receive the Spirit and spend time with God. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, come and do in us what you want to do because we want to be the people you created us to be. Surrounds in deepest waters, the sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now.
When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Lord, we want to come to you now as your people. We want to give ourselves to you again. We want to say that our faith is small, but we want it to be bigger. We want to say that we are a small people with a great God. And Lord, we do just give to you the desires of our hearts, the longings of our hearts, the things that you have given to us, the visions and the dreams. Lord, would you Come and show us what it means to step out in trust and faith, to go deeper, a little bit deeper than we are now with you. So come, Holy Spirit, and continue your work in us. Do not let us go. Do not let us go and be unfulfilled, really, because we want to be everything you want us to be. Amen. Would you like to sit down? Just conscious that there may be people who are holding something that God has said to them and it may be an individual calling or it may just be a dream or a vision or a longing and if that is the case don't go out of this building really without having at least mentioned it to someone because that gives it a concreteness really you don't want it to slip away once you're fr gone from here. So if there's something that God has been saying to you, even if you don't understand what it means, even if you don't know how you could possibly do that or be involved in that, it might be good to find somebody, and Sophie and I would be available, but I'm sure there are other people you know who you could just sit down with and say, I feel God may be saying this, but I don't know what that means yet. But I want to explore it. Okay, we're moving on just into the end of our service now. And I just want to say um, a few things that are coming up because actually these are opportunities that God may have given you to sort of take you that little bit further out from the shore. So there's a, a, a few things that are, are coming up, and I've just written them down from uh, Tom's email this week. Prayer ministry training on the 12th of February. If you feel, oh, I couldn't get involved in that. It may be that God might be just prompting you to come to that and to learn a bit, a bit more about praying for healing for other people. Prophecy and evangelism training at St. Michael's, March the 5th, or in com I don't know if it's at St. Michael's, actually. In com to together with St. Michael's is the thing, on March the 5th. Again, prophecy, words of knowledge. 
if that feels like a scary area, that also may be a great thing. And that links with evangelism, which is really, you know, the real challenge of this passage. And then um, I think in the prayers, Becca mentioned uh, Fiona Hendley coming this Thursday. It is this coming Thursday, isn't it, Becca? Yeah. Finding your destiny. So if you're thinking, I don't know where God is leading me, that might be a wonderful evening to come to. Um, and for those of my generation, Fiona Hendley is married to Paul Jones of Manfred Mann. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Just saying that. I know we shouldn't be judged by the people we're married to, but even so. Okay. Sorry? Just a women's event, Sophie is saying. So, uh, men, you've got to find your destiny in your own way, all right? Okay, and the final thing I had on my uh, list was um, about giving to the church. And it's possible that one of the things that God has been saying to you this morning is, actually, I want you to go deeper in the way you give. And um, so just to remind you that there are different ways of giving, one-off gifts, a legacy, um, pledge for a set time, all sorts of different variations in ways of giving. And um, get in touch with Howard, who I don't think can be here today, if that is something that God is laying on your heart. Okay, the band have stood here very patiently because they know we've got our final hymn. hymn. So would you like to stand and we're going to sing Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon and in their courses above Join with all nature in manifold witness To thy great faithfulness, mercy and love Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning New mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings, O oh mine, with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. Mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hand has provided. Grace is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. So 
So do stay for coffee. Um, and the coffee will be over there. And there were, what were they, chocolate chip brioches? I had my eye on one of those. So put one to one side for me, please. Thank you. Um, so uh, stay for coffee. And if you're new here or fairly new, do come and introduce yourself either to me or to Sophie or um, to somebody else. Um, that would be great. So we come to the end of our service. And I'm just going to read that final verse of our reading again. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up onto the shore, left everything and followed him. So go out in the spirit of God, go out in the strength of God, and go out in the peace of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Would you like to share peace with each other and then have coffee?